Hello students, welcome to the ninth lecture in partial differential equations. So in this video lecture, we will discuss the type 3 which is based on rule 3 for solving. So in the previous videos, we have learned the two ways how to solve a partial differential equations. Now, in case if those two methods fail, is there any other method to deal with these partial differential equations? Yes, there is a type third to solve the partial differential equations. So let me to give you an overview what steps we will follow to solve this type 3 right so now if we let that p1 q1 and r1 are any functions of x y and z respectively right then each fraction in this equation 1 can i make the each fraction in this equation 1 as p1 into dx plus q1 into dy plus r1 into dz divided by p1 p plus q1 q plus r1 r now if this denominator is 0 right then the numerator has to be 0 right so by the well known principle of algebra that is if the numerator becomes 0 so this thing this whole thing will become 0 right so just write it down here that is p1 dx plus q1 dy plus r1 dz is equal to 0 now you can simply integrate this you will get a function u1 right which is a function of x y and z right similarly you can find the another function also using the same technique fine with this or you can use the previous techniques also if they are applicable important is this p1 q1 and r1 they are known as the multipliers so the main challenge while solving the type 3 of partial differential equation is you have to search for these multipliers if you are able to search for these multipliers then very quickly you will get the desired solution right so let me to take few examples so as to make you these steps which i have described here more clear so let me to take a first example so this is a partial differential equation which is written here right now the first step is always to convert right so the first step is always to write the lagrange subsidiary equation so let me to write the lagrange equation so this will be dx upon so this will be b minus c into yz divided by a so this a will go in the numerator similarly this is equal to b into dy divided by c minus a into zx this will be further equal to dz upon so that is a minus b into xy right and this c will go in the numerator so this is the required lagrange differential equation now you can easily see that my type 1 and type 2 is not applicable above right so you cannot find the solution using type 1 and type 2 so type 3 will be applicable so in type 3 i will be finding out the lagrange multipliers and how are my lagrange multipliers calculated so lagrange multiplier says that if you multiply the first factor with some p1 right the second factor with some maybe q1 and the third factor maybe with some r1 and then if you add these factors right and then denominator becomes a zero so it means the numerator corresponding will also become zero that is p1 into a plus q1 into b plus r1 into c has to be zero right now let me to take p1 as x right q1 as y and r1 as z now how what is the motivation behind this is again hit and trial or you can say with practice right so once you start solving many questions so you can you know easily find out these lagrange multipliers but one thing which i can observe from here is that this is a multiple of y and z so x is missing so but just by hit and trial i suppose my p1 to be x similarly for q1 i choose to be y because z and x are present and similarly for r so if i multiply p1 with the this b minus c into y z for what it will be x y z multiply with b minus c plus the second factor that is x y z multiply with c minus a and the last one that is a x y z into a minus b so just take x y z common what you are left with is b minus c plus c minus a plus a minus b see a and a will get cancel out c and c will get cancel out and b and b will get cancel out so hence if you multiply the first denominator by p1 second with the q1 and the third one with r1 and just add them up so you get a zero so what does it mean it means that if you multiply now my numerator also that is a p1 times into a dx plus q1 times b dy plus r1 times c dz it has to be zero fine with this 
Now, what was my P1? That was x. So, it will be ax dx plus just substitute the value of q1 that is a y plus r1 times so what is my r1 that is a z so c z dz equals to 0 now just integrate it right so just integrate let me call it as 1 so on integration what do i get that is a a x square by 2 plus b y square by 2 plus c z square by 2 is equal to some constant c1 fine with this or if you more simplify these terms, what it will be? It will be ax square plus by square plus cz square. And let me to call this as now c1. Fine. Uh, and see, let it be c1 prime. Right. So this is my first equation. That is the first solution. Right. So mark it as a star. Now the same technique I will be applying for the another solution also. Now in order to calculate the second solution, what I will do, I will again by hit and trial, I will assume some Lagrange multiplier, right? And I will see if that works or not, right? So if I suppose my Lagrange multiplier to be AX, BY and CZ, fine with this. Now let me to see that whether they will help us or not, fine? So if they are going to help us, what does it mean? It means if you multiply the numerator and denominator, so then other ways, ax into a that is a, a square dx that will be a square x into dx plus b square y dy plus c square z dz right divide by so multiply the first term by that is a ax so this will be a into b minus c into xyz plus multiply the second one with b into y so this will be c minus a right and b is multiplied multiply with xyz Similarly for the last one, so this will be C times A minus B into X, Y, Z. So just see, just solve the denominator first. So if I write the numerator as it is. And now if I take X, Y, Z common from the denominator, right? So what I am left with is, so that is a A, B minus A, C plus B, C minus A, B plus A, C minus C, B fine with this now just see if the terms get cancelled out so ab gets cancelled out with ab right bc with bc and ac with ac so the denominator becomes zero so it implies the numerator has to be zero so if you substitute the numerator to be zero that is a square x dx plus b square y dy plus c square z dz equals to zero what do i get i get a square x square by 2 plus b square y square by 2 plus c square z square by 2 is equal to some constant c2 prime now if you simplify these terms so that is a square x square plus b square y square plus c square z square is equal to some c2 where c2 is nothing but my 2 c2 prime right and call it as double star now since star and double star they are my two solutions right so let me to call this solution as u right and let me to call this double star as the solution v and the final general solution that can be written as that is phi of u comma v equals to zero then you can substitute the values of u and v that is phi of if i write that is ax square plus b y square plus c z square right comma what is the v that is a a square x square plus b square y square plus c square z square equals to zero and phi is any arbitrary function now let me to take one more example in order to make this method more clear so the corresponding differential equation given to me is mz minus ny into p plus nx minus lz into q equals to ly minus m into x so the first step will be just we will find the lagrange differential equation or the lagrange auxiliary equation so that is a dx upon mz minus ny this is equals to dy upon nx minus lz this is equals to dz upon ly minus mx so again hit and trial if i just what uh, now again i will be finding out the lagrange multipliers so if i choose my lagrange multiplier to be x y and z so what will happen it will give me x dx plus y dy plus z into dz and what will be in the denominator that will be x times first term so this will be that is m x z fine minus n x y 
now multiply the second term with y so what it will be that is plus n x y minus l y z and the last term with z that is a l y z minus m x z now just see if the terms in the denominator gets cancelled out or not so this is my m x z so m x z gets cancelled out with m x z what about n x y so these also get cancelled out and similarly l y z also get cancelled out so hence if the denominator is equal to 0 so the numerator has also to be equal to 0 that is x dx plus y dy plus z dz has to be equal to 0. Why not just integrate this so it will give me x square by 2 plus y square by 2 plus z square by 2 right is equal to some c1 prime and if you take 2 in the right hand side so this will be x square plus y square is equal to 2 c1 prime and let me call it as c1 where c1 is nothing but my 2 c1 prime so again a new constant and let me do call it as star and this is my first solution which i will be calling with u again now i want the second multipliers also the second multipliers right so if i choose my so these these were my first lagrange multiplier now the second lagrange multiplier if i choose to be that is l m and n right so what will happen just see so if I just write this Lagrange differential equation again, so this was my Lagrange differential equation, and now I suppose my Lagrange multiplier to be L M and N, right? So what will happen? That is L D X plus M D Y plus N D Z. Okay, and what will be in the denominator? That will be just multiply the first term with L. That will be L M Z minus L into N into Y. And multiply the next term with m so this will give me m n x minus m into l into z right and the last one with n that is l n y minus m n into x fine with this now just see if the terms gets cancelled out or not l m z so this is l m z this is my l m z this is my n l y again this is my n l y and similarly m n x and m n x so again so it means the numerator has to be equal to zero and the last step is just to integrate this and if you integrate it again a very simple thing that is a lx plus my plus n into z that is equal to some c2 now mark this as a double star right and this is again my second solution so i will call it as v and the final solution will be given as phi of u comma v is equals to zero where phi is my arbitrary function so now we take the third example so that is the lagrange auxiliary equation corresponding to this will be dx upon y minus zx that is dy upon x plus yz and final is dz upon x square plus y square now again i have to find the lagrange multiplier so by hit and trial if i suppose if i choose the lagrange multiplier to be x y and z so what will happen see the first term will become x y minus z x square the next will become plus x y right plus y square z and the last one that is plus x square y oh sorry x square z plus y square into z so just see if the terms get cancelled out so you can see the x y and x y so they are getting added up right but what about this this is z x square and z x square this is only getting cancelled out so by hit and trial now if i suppose this y to be minus y so what will happen just see if i choose this to be minus y so this will become minus this will become minus and now this will be really very helpful for because x y and x y will get cancelled out z x square and z x square is cancelled and y square z into y square z also gets cancelled out so that is how by hit and trial you should find the lagrange multiplier so let me do formally write all these things so as to make things more clear so if i supposed my lagrange multiplier to be x minus y and z so what will happen corresponding so this will be x dx minus y dy plus z into dz whole divided by so the first term will be x y minus x square z fine and the next term will be minus y square x minus the next term will be minus y x minus y square z right and the last one will be x square z plus y square z now you can see if the terms gets cancelled out so this is x y and x y x square z and x square z and y square z and y square z so this implies that the numerator has to be zero and if you just integrate the numerator so what you will get that is x square by 2 minus y square by 2 plus z square by 2 is equals to some constant c1 prime 
Now just take 2 on the right hand side. So what I will get that is x square minus y square plus z square is equals to some 2c1 prime and let me to call 2c1 prime as c1. So this is my first solution and let me to call this as uxyz. Fine. So this is my first solution. Now I wish to find out the second solution. Now we wish to find the second Lagrange multiplier and the second Lagrange multiplier if I suppose that is y x and minus 1. So let me now let me suppose these are my Lagrange multiplier. Again you will find out these Lagrange multiplier by practice only. There is no direct way. There is no method right. The same way we solve integration or trigonometry in class 11 or 12. So initially we feel difficulty while solving those problems. But once we start solving problems, we start solving more and more questions, we get comfortable to these questions. So the same pattern will be followed up here. So once you start finding out Lagrange multiplier from your own side, so there will be clarity in finding out in the Lagrange multiplier. So let me see if I multiply my y, so that is y into dx plus x into dy minus dz. So what will happen in the denominator? So multiply the first term with y. So this will be y square minus xyz. The next term will be x. So this will be plus x square plus xyz. And the final one will be minus x square minus y square. Now just see if the terms gets cancelled out. So this is plus x square minus x square plus y square minus y square. And the last one xyz minus xyz. And this implies the numerator has to be equal to 0. And if you just now integrate it, so that is y dx plus x dy minus dz equals to 0. Or you can say dz equals to x dy plus y dx. And what is this? This is nothing but derivative of xy, right? This is equal to derivative of z. Now just integrate on both sides. So if you integrate on both sides, what do I get? I get z equals to xy plus some c2 right and if you bring all the terms on one side so this will be x y minus z equals to some c2 now call this as my second function that is a double star so that is my another function that is v and the final solution is written as phi of u comma v equals to 0 where phi is my arbitrary function and you should substitute the value of u and v here so what was my u my u was x square minus y square plus z square and what was my v that was x y minus z equals to 0 and phi being any arbitrary function. So, so I hope this concept of finding out the Lagrange multiplier is clear to you now. In my next video lecture also I will be taking out more problems so as to make you things more clear. So I hope you have enjoyed this video session. For more such videos do subscribe to my YouTube channel and do not forget to press the bell icon. Thank you students for watching this video. Thank you so much.